Ashley on Gears. As I'm sure you've been aware that I have been away for uh, a couple of days. So here we go. Let me tell you about my uh, Blackberry uh, visit to Budapest in Hungary, which I'd never been, never been to before. So I was very, very, um, very excited to go. And I've got to tell you, it was a proper VIP experience. You know, we ran the competition over here and our winner, Brandon uh, Landy, um, got the, the real McCoy, let me tell you. So let me start when we arrived at the airport. I arrived and I got hold of Brandon. I said, listen, you know, when you get here, I'm going to check in, et cetera, et cetera. I'll meet you up in the uh, business lounge. <laughs> um, and eventually he arrived and, uh, well, we shook hands. How's it going? Blah, blah, blah. We had about an hour before we were boarding. And this was his first time ever uh, going outside the borders of um, Africa. He's been to Mozambique. That's it. Wow. Okay. So he'd never been overseas. He no wonder he went so crazy when he heard he exactly. won. Exactly. So he'd never been overseas before in his life. He had just picked up his Hungarian uh, Schengen visa in the morning and he was ready. So there we were, the two of us with our, our very cool Blackberry backpacks, ready to board our plane. Walk in. Thank you very much. Business class. That'll do. Glass of champagne. Thank you very much. <laughs> And um, flew over, arrived in Munich, um, in Germany, which was cool. Got our connecting flight and eventually, well, we got stuck a little bit on the tarmac where we were in the plane with our connecting flight and the, the German um, pilot came across and said, well, there's a little bit of emergency problem that uh, we might be delayed a few minutes, so please be patient, everybody. And we were, we were patient. And we flew over, oh, we, and we flew to... Um, flew to Budapest but let me tell you what happened on the plane just as we going to board there was this weird American guy okay who rocked up at the counter and threw his stuff onto the counter and he looked a little bit out of it got to tell you this huge big Texican Texan kind of hat on okay <laughs> and he had this overcoat on him with him which I mean you would wear in the North Pole now you got to understand it's summer in Europe and his shirt was hanging out, and I was chatting, chatting, chatting. And then he came to stand next to me, and he, he tried to start making conversation about what we were going, where we were going, what we we're going to do, etc. And I, you know, I've travelled a bit. And you don't want to get into a conversation with a guy who's already now upset the the checking counter ladies. So I started speaking off a cards to him. <laughs> That's it. And we left it, and we eventually we boarded the plane. This guy gets onto the plane. And he walks about four rows behind us and sits down. Cut a long story short, he got kicked off the plane. <gasps> yeah, he got kicked off. Was he drunk? I don't know what he was, but the pilot came and eventually said, "Listen, pal, off." Blah blah blah. And he started asking the pilot, "Where's the next? Um, when's the next flight to Budapest?" The guy said, "Hey, go and check in and go and find out yourself." That was it. So. Guy got kicked off the plane. So imagine if I was having a great conversation <laughs> with this guy, we would have got... Uh, oh, I we, found that so hilarious yeah. that you ch chose to speak Afrikaans. Well, that was it. I mean, what, you know... What speak did he do? No, he just... He was trying to, you know, get my attention and talking and talking. He knew that he, that I could speak. Eventually, I just walked away. <laughs> so that was it. So we arrive in, uh, in Budapest, and there's a guy standing outside. Blackberry, thank you very much. Oh, on the plane, we see Alan McNeish. Alan McNeish is the guy who won Le Mans again. He used to race oh. for Toyota in Formula One. So I said, hey, wow. congratulations. And he said, oh, thank you very much. And so we get there and Vio is our guy who picks us up. Now, Vio, I can't remember his surname. Andrio Kakili is something. He's Greek, but he's German. He's German. He's born, in, uh, born in Germany, raised in Germany, but he's Greek by, by descent or whatever. He takes us in our uh, sponsored, thank you, Mercedes Viana with Blackberry on the side. All the pictures are there up on the Facebook page. And um, just the two of us in one of these Vianas. And we're sitting over there. We've got our bottles of water, a couple of snacks, whatever we want. Get taken to our hotel, which is Le Meridien Hotel. It's in the hub of Budapest. We arrive there. And there are people standing outside the hotel, not just your um, concierge people and porters and that. There are like just people standing, like sort of marked off in railings. So we get out and they're looking and looking and looking. So, you know, they thought maybe we were famous. But <laughs> that didn't. I'm sure you claimed it. Walk in, yeah. Walked in giving the, the Queen's sort wave. Sort of a little royal wave <laughs> or something. So that didn't, uh, didn't materialize. But now because we were delayed, we, was, we were running a little bit late. So we sort of checked in. Sat down, um, had a quick beer, and then we were getting a shuttle service to the circuit 
for the Thursday afternoon, we were going to go and meet there and hopefully meet up with Lewis Hamilton uh, in a press conference. So our shuttle arrived, Izzy, a Mercedes S-Class limo. <laughs> Guy gets out, opens the door for us. Thank you very much. We both sit in the back seat. It's got those um, shutter blinds. No. Yeah, no, so you, you're a proper VIP. Proper, proper VIP. So, oh, this will do. So we yeah. shoot off shoot off to the circuit and uh, get dropped off by this caravan where we meet our Blackberry friends, Simon uh, and Sam. Brilliant, brilliant guys, uh, guy and girl. Brilliant, brilliant people. So Sa Simon says to us, he says, listen, guys, let's let's get our way up there and try and get into, um, into the pit walk. Because basically on the Thursday afternoon was a free pit walk for um, people who had a Friday afternoon um, pass. Don't forget, this is Thursday afternoon. It took us so long. There were so many people. There must have been 15, 20,000 people trying to get into the pit walk. We eventually got into the pit walk, okay? So it was Simon, Brandon, and myself, and then we met up with Ola from Mercedes uh, AMG Patronus. And he gave us a very fancy passes, and they, everyone's standing behind the railings. Now we move into the railings. So now every, we're Now like, you know you are the we, business. Now we're pretty fancy. We've got our fancy little thing. So it takes us through to the uh, Mercedes-Benz motorhome. Um, but the press conference, unfortunately, had already finished with Lewis. So he said, no, no, never mind that, guys. We'll take you on a garage, garage tour, and you can go and see everything that's going on. So we go into the Mercedes-Benz garage, and there are only certain areas you're allowed to take photos, and there are certain areas you can't take photos. And he took us up close, but I mean the inside of the gearbox, how the gearbox works. You know, to me, this stuff's very, very exciting. Um, the drive shaft that is in the actual carbon fiber um, uh, uh, sort of uh, wheel attachment. Those kind of things. Then the engine, um, right up close with the engine, and then talking to all of the other engineers, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And then we go around the front. Then we can take photos of the cars being prepped and getting ready for Friday free practice. And then there were certain of the teams that were they were practicing their pit stops, uh, Sauber, Williams, Caterham. So we were hanging around there, taking photos of them practicing their pit stops. And we're on this side of the barrier. Don't forget and the, <laughs> the, the other thousands of people on the other side of the barrier. So we were there for about a good half an hour. Um, which was um, which was very very cool. So then um, that evening we had on our own. So Brandon and I caught ourselves a, a taxi, just a normal taxi, because our S class guy unfortunately couldn't hang around. You know, <laughs> so we just caught a normal taxi driving back to our hotel. Now don't forget we've seen nothing um, of of Budapest. All we've seen is the hotel, getting in cars and going to the circuit, and now we're coming back to the hotel. So. Before that, I'd asked the concierge, I said, listen, where's like the hub, you know, where, where, I mean, it's middle of summer, there's loads of great things happening. So he says, no, 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 you make your way to the cathedral over there and you'll, you'll see it. So we're driving back and I see the cathedral and then we're driving and I see this, this square of a hive of activity, just hundreds and thousands of young people having uh, drinks and all of that kind of stuff. I said, this is the place, we've got to find this place. This is, this is the place. Just remember where this place is. Because now we don't know our bearings at all. So we think, okay, it must be there. It can't be too far to walk. So the taxi driver turns right, right at our hotel. It's the cross the road. Oh, no way. <laughs> it's across the road. So we think, oh. okay, here we go. So, we, so you were staying in like an insane hotel. Oh, no, no. The, the hotel was unbelievable. So we get back. Now we check into our rooms properly or whatever. And I say, Brandon, come, let's go across the road here. And let's go and find out what's going on. So we go across the road, and it's just it's just a vibe. I mean, it's just, and it's hot. It's properly hot. Just such a vibe. So we go over there and order ourselves a beer. And then I watch everyone, and they're drinking this pink drink. <laughs> Everyone's drinking this pink drink. So I think, well, listen, we've got to we got to try and drink what the foreigners are. I mean, what the locals are drinking. So I go to the bar place and i say well listen what is uh, that they're drinking no 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 it's a rosé spritzer so i think great let's give a couple of those i'm not averse to a little bit of wine no so we so we drink a few that's um, delicious yeah no it was delicious so we drink a few of these things and we're sitting down at a table having a drink or whatever and behind us there's a group of of uh, hungarian girls and i must just tell you these hungarian girls are very very pretty that's a beautiful beautiful um, specimen of, of people <laughs> so now i'm sitting in our turn i must say i've seen quite a few pictures of girls on facebook from your album oh 
<laughs> I don't know how that happened. But jeez, they were pretty. Um, and the one girl looked the spitting image of Mila Jovovich. Oh, wow. But like this, and so, I mean, you couldn't take a photo, you know, you couldn't say, hello, can we take a photo? Uh, anyway. Maybe but, it was her. Yeah, but no, but I wrote it down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I wrote it down here, having be a Miller Jovovich lookalike. I always have forgotten. This is so cute. You've made notes. I made notes. <laughs> so then that evening, so Brandon's a bit tired. He goes back to his room. I go back to my room. I, ah, no, I can't do that. So I go back to this place. Um, <laughs> and then I, then I find the wine area. And it's basically it, every single place is just a drinks place. And you go in there and you, it's like going to uh, Taste of Joburg. But this is Taste of Hungary. So you go there and you buy your glass and then you have mum champagne and then you go to the next one you have much champagne and then you have a Verve Clicquot and then you have a local wine and then you have... Oh, uh, delicious. And I mean, so... And unfortunately, the one problem is is that our money is very much monopoly money. Yeah. It's, it's really... It's very, very expensive. So that was okay. So I woke up on the uh, Friday morning. Get up. Thank you very much. Ready to go. We've got via our driver man. Very, very cool. Get in there. And Friday's a good day to go to a race day because it's not overly busy. So we get there. We find our seats because we're sitting in the grandstand, which is thank thank goodness because it's very, very hot. And in the, the super gold grandstand where we were sitting, uh, we were undercover. The other people that were not in cover, I'm telling you, they, there were problems over the weekend because the heat was so, so much. So we watched the first free practice. That's very, very cool. And I'm busy sitting down there, and there's a lady sitting like in a row in front of us, about five, five away to the left. And she turns around. She's wearing a nice Fernando Alonso cap, and she shouts my name out. So I go, hello, hello. She's from Kenya. No way. Yeah, yeah. And watches us on the TV. Oh, that's awesome. So I went and had a picture with her and her family and, and her and her husband in the Ferrari outfit, the little kid in the, in the um, uh, Sebastian Vettel Red Bull outfit. So it was very, <laughs> very cool. And then you get hungry. So now you want to eat in Hungary. So you're not too sure. So you think it's like German or whatever. So there's big, large sausages, bratwursts or whatever. So I decide... Well, I'm a bit hungry or whatever, so I go and order the sausage. But it, I promise you it's about this long. <laughs> but it's not really a sausage. I don't really know what it is that I ate. I mean, I just ate because I'd been drinking a few beers because it, <laughs> it was very, very hot. And you had to keep your hydration going. So you drank quite a lot of beer. But I ate this huge, huge, um, huge sausage thing, which was a bit strange. And then... Was um, it at least delicious? No, it wasn't. Wasn't, wasn't it? No, it wasn't very pleasant. I don't know what it was. So basically, you should have just stuck to the beer. Yeah. Which I did there afterwards okay. until I found the pizza place. <laughs> but that's another story. So then we go back to our seats, sit down. Thank you very much. Miss Columbia comes to sit next to me. Whoa. Well, I thought she was Miss Columbia. <laughs> she, was, she was divine. So there, she's sitting next to her husband who's from Mexico, but he's about 90 and she's about 25. Okay. So her name was Sandra. His name was something else. His name was Billionaire. Yeah, something like that. And then I spoke to you guys. Okay, and then sitting in front of me, um, I, I had the Flintstone family. The, you've never seen people so large in your life. <laughs> and I thought, this is going to be unbelievable. Now, the whole Grand Prix weekend, I'm going to have these people sitting in front of me the whole time. Subsequently, it didn't turn out that way. They were only there for the Friday free, um, free practice. So, the Friday night that we go out to dinner with Sam and Simon, the people from, uh, who were entertaining us from Blackberry, we went to the stunning uh, restaurant on, uh, right next to a beautiful church, uh, had a lovely steak tartare, had a nice ribeye steak, it was terrific. They went their own way. Brandon and I decided, well, what do we know? Let's go back to our little <laughs> jaunt Square. over here. So, I took him to the place that, that he had missed out on the previous night. And we went around and drank. Uh, we drank all of this, and then we found these martini people, and we drank all of their martinis, and blah 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 blah. Um, and eventually, we went to sleep. So we woke up on Saturday morning, not feeling too posh. Went back to the circuit. Now we've got free practice three. We've got qualifying to do. Get there, and Brandon's—he's not—he's not—he's not handling. These youngsters today—they can't <laughs> handle, baby. So we're sitting down. So I say to him, I said, and it's hot, eh? And there's nothing worse than having a big hangover and, and it's hot. So I say to him, I said, listen, why don't you try and go up the hill a little bit, find one of the trees or whatever, and go and lie down, have a sleep. So he disappears for about half an hour. He comes back and he goes, listen, I, ca I, can't, I can't handle this. I've, I need to go back. So I phone the driver, Vio, and Vio is there. He says, no problem or whatever. It takes Brandon back to the, <laughs> to the hotel. Listen, at least he was honest about it. I mean, the guy was dying. 
he was really taking strain. So I spent the afternoon, and it was it was it was very lucky for me, um, because Simon and Sam, our entertainers or whatever, they also had another crowd of 50, 60 people that they were looking after, but they had the special paddock passes, but they only had three amongst them. So now Brandon had disappeared. I was there on my own. Uh, so they called me. Simon called me and he said, listen, um, would you like to go and have lunch in the Mercedes motorhome? <gasps> so I said, no, I'd actually just prefer to stay here in the hot sun and eat, <laughs> eat one of these really large sure. sausage things that I don't really know what it is. So uh, I meet him and we walk across the bridge and now we're in the whole paddock. Can I just interrupt? Yes. Have you met Lewis at this stage? No, no, no. We didn't meet, we didn't meet Lewis. We didn't, didn't even, we didn't even see him. No, we didn't. He, should have, he was meant to be staying in our hotel, by the way. I'll get to who was staying in our hotel. But he, he wasn't. Him and Nico decided they wanted to stay at the circuit. So we didn't see them. Aww. So, I, you know, I'm walking down the paddock and I see just about all of the drivers. I mean, uh, from, from test driver Pedro De La Rosa, Hulkenberg, um, you name it, they were all there. Checo. So I saw all of the drivers going to the Mercedes-Benz motorhome. Nicky Lauda sitting over there. That's all great. We sitting down having something to eat. Find out that the chef lady in the back cooking all the food is from South Africa. <gasps> oh, they go, okay, cool. That's very, very nice. So I'm sure we'll... And then also I got a tweet from a girl last week before I left telling me she's from Cape Town saying that she's doing Singapore... Uh, India, Abu Dhabi, and I think Brazil. She's also part of the catering team of uh, Mercedes Benz. Um, shoo, uh, yeah, where were we? You were eating lunch. Yeah, so we had lunch at the at the um, the the motorhome, which was really really cool. And then I walked around the pit, uh, pit complex or the paddock complex for a while, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, and made my way back to my seat. We went and watched the qualifying, which was electrifying. And as soon as the qualifying finished, just bolted out of there, got onto my, my shuttle, and Vio and I drove back home. Because the, the, the traffic, you know, also gets, um, gets, gets uh, quite interesting. I found one of the coolest T-shirts, but I, unfortunately, I, it was some guy wearing it. Because, <laughs> you know, Nike has the thing, just do it. So I found that shirt, Adi, then does. Have yeah. you ever seen that? Very cool. Isn't that brilliant? Yeah. I, wanted, I wrote that down. <laughs> Adi does. Yeah. Um, there we go. And then Simon and and Sam. Funny enough, we didn't get a picture of the. I think, or well, maybe uh, maybe Brandon took a picture of us. Because Simon you carry this book around with you the yeah, whole time. Of course. So Simon, Simon is like a like a nerd. Simon is like <laughs> so a, cute. Did, so, did you wear your spectacles and braces while writing? No. Oh, so okay. Simon, Simon is like a young uh, younger uh, Ryan Gosling, by the way. Okay, that's what he looks Ooh. like. And Sam is like uh, looks like Anna Kornikova. Ooh. So, Are I they would, a couple? No, they're not a couple. Oh. So then I was writing down what happened in Q1 and Q2 and uh, Hamilton on pole, blah, 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 blah. Then what was amazing, Simon phoned me and he said to me, listen, later on in the hotel, I've organized an interview with Paddy Lowe. So I was like, oh, brilliant. Now, Paddy Lowe is new recruited Mercedes-Benz, came from McLaren. He's the executive director technical. So I get back to the hotel, which is all cool. I go and freshen up, and I go down in, into the hotel. The one um, uh, bar is called the White Lounge. So I go there and have a nice little glass of bubbles, uh, which is nice. But the amount of people that are standing outside the hotel. Now, we at the La Meridian, and next door to us is the Kemp Kempinski Hotel. Okay. In our hotel, we've got the Williams team, the uh, Sauber team, the Mercedes team. Okay, in our hotel. In the hotel next to us, there is the Ferrari team and the Red Bull team. So you must understand, you arrive back at the hotel and, you, and now you're in your fancy Blackberry car and you get out and people are like looking, okay, who's this? I don't know, we don't know who he is. But as soon as they see, get wind of what's going on, they're running from one hotel to the other to just try and get photographs or whatever. So Bottas was there, Valtteri Bottas arrived sort of when I arrived and I just bumped, I, I bumped, couple people out the way and i said hey valtteri how's it going i know cheryl calder very well and he said oh okay yeah you the guy from south africa i said yeah thank you blah blah blah, oh, blah. That's cool. which is very nice yeah wow. which is very cool and then um vettel arrives at the hotel next to us and vettel's got this fancy um infinity car fx50 but it's done up okay and this is the first time i'd seen it because i'd heard that they were doing a special edition oh my word oh it's proper Oh, she's it's proper. So anyway, so that's what happened. So eventually I meet up with Paddy Lowe, 
We have a special uh, room set up for us. Got my flash mic. We do the interview. We chat for about 20 minutes. And most of the talking is all about 2014. How it's going to be. What's the car's going to sound like. That's amazing. Etc. Etc. Also, cheers. Um, and then, oh yeah, I'm in the White Lounge and I meet the lady who's serving me drinks. She's from Moldova. Okay. Have you? Did you know that Moldova have the biggest wine cellars in the world? How's that? And you're a wine lover, Ian. Mm. Also... They have underground streets in Moldova. Not an underground train session or underground streets. So they've got a normal road and they've got underground sea streets as well. Of what? For people to drive in. I don't know. Wow. That's then it, cool. Like an underground tunnel. Yeah, tunnels. Then it got a bit pear-shaped because I had finished now my interview. I had all of my stuff with me and I wanted a cigarette so you can only smoke outside. So I go outside and there's another bar area and I sit down. I've got all my stuff with me. Great, great, great. And I meet the two Scots. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Ian and Susan. So Ian and Susan. Mm -hmm. Now this is about quarter past seven in the evening. Mm -hmm. Sun only goes down at about nine. So this is about quarter past seven in the evening. You know, you just got to remember that in Scotland, there's very bad weather and nothing to do but shag and drink. Yeah. So we didn't do any shagging. <laughs> we just like drank. Sounds like kind of thing. <laughs> yeah. Hello. So we just ended up drinking. So um, I don't know, but it was about 11 o'clock that evening. Some friends of theirs arrived also from Scotland. But the one girl was so hysterical because she was real Glaswegian. So you couldn't understand a word she did. <laughs> right. But in her um, uh, rush to, I suppose, meet me because, um, you know, bumped the damn table <gasps> and knocked my flash mic off and shattered it. Uh -uh. Yeah, so I lost the interview with Patty Lowe. Oh, no. Which is unfortunate. It's just one of those things. But I managed to put the whole thing back together again and it seems to work. But somewhere along the line... We lost, uh, we lost that uh, or whatever. So it was a rather, a rather interesting uh, late night. Sunday, race day. Too much excitement. Get up. Thank you very much. All You see all the drivers in the morning. Pastor Maldonado is there at breakfast. Jensen's there. The McLaren team were with us as well in the same hotel. Williams were there. Sauber was there. So everyone's getting excited. We all go off to the track. Terrific. We watched the FB2 race. Brandon and I are just mingling around, getting something to eat, something to drink. And you get back now into your seats and it's just fully, you know, now it's jammed. There's nowhere to move. You've got thousands and thousands and thousands of people. And just the build-up, the anticipation to get, you know, to the start of the race. And eventually the race starts. And, and, and don't forget, this is Brandon. Okay, besides, he's been there Friday. Well, Thursday, he's seen cars. And Friday, the first time he ever heard a Formula One car. Friday. Yeah. And then Saturday and then Sunday again. What was his reaction? No, it was mental. But now you don't forget because you've got the start of the race and you're going to have 22 cars coming flying yeah, past Yeah, and that's you. a whole other movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, so we were sitting up in the grandstands on Friday. Sorry to go back. But on Friday, the one day I said, listen, get your headphones, uh, I mean, your earplugs in, um, which Blackberry had, you know, kindly given us. But I've got my own headphones. So I, I put them on. He says, do we need them? I mean, we're quite high up in the stands. I said, uh, suit yourself, buddy. Um, and the start of the race. And we're about 350 meters away from the actual start line. Okay, so we're going to now see this drag because it's a long drag down to turn one. It's just the most exciting. Were you, were you behind the start line or ahead of the ahead start line? Ahead of the start line. Yeah, okay, so they come towards They're you. coming towards so us. So by the time those cars come past you, they're full tilt. Oh, no, no, they're full tilt. I mean, by the time they get, get to us, they're already at 220, 230 yeah, 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 k's yeah, yeah, an yeah. hour. And then they're going to hit 300 before the end of the corner. And then the start of the race. And then it's just going on and on and on. So, and then from there, and I'm trying to, you know, explain to him, okay, watch this. This this watch so-and-so is going to pit now, et cetera, et cetera. Until eventually, I mean, it's, you get this magnificent victory for, for Lewis Hamilton. I mean, when, when I know. saw that, I was like, yeah, this is, this is possibly one of the greatest weekends of, well, I mean, the great, of watching Formula 1. The great thing about it as well, you go there as a, as a guest of the team that wins. That's, no, it's very special. That's, that's pretty special. So the race itself was was magic. You can't believe how quickly it goes. And um, you watch that, and then it's sort of like all over. By that stage, I've run out of all of my hoof money and euro money, spending it on all the merchandise shops over there and that kind of stuff. The characters that you see, I mean, we saw people. We, there was a lady who had had a dress made, Red Bull. Then there was a Ferrari lady. Then there were these guys who were dressed up in like can-can outfits with, with uh, wigs on. But there was one picture on Facebook. It's so cute. A little girl. She's... Oh, in little like denim shorts and got and her headphones it, on. That little girl was sitting right behind me. And she was there on the Saturday and she was there on the Sunday. And she was just the cutest little she girl. She looks and so she, cute. She had such a ball. 
the amount of young kids that were there was just extraordinary. It was so magic to see, you know, and I mean, it's heavy. So, I mean, at least they've got their headphones and, and that kind of stuff. But they were really, really enjoyed it. So we finished the race and, um, yeah, we managed because we had organized with via our driver to go and meet him somewhere else because otherwise the traffic was just going to be too hectic. And we got out of there, I promise you, within uh, 35 minutes, we were back in the hotel. Mm. Um, we were exhausted though. We were also tired, you know. I mean, mm. it's been a long day. And also your adrenaline builds mm. you up so mm. much that eventually you're going, okay, I've had enough. I'm, I'm tired now. Did they have... Uh did they have stalls from all the different teams and sort of a walkway where you yeah. could you could go and buy merchandise? Oh yeah, yeah, and stuff yeah. Like no, that. they had a full full merchandising. Uh, I mean, specific teams have have their own things. So, I mean, yeah. you had Lotus, you had Ferrari, you had McLaren, you had Mercedes, and then you have general uh, Formula One merchandise. Oh, that in stalls itself as well. is quite special. Oh no, that's amazing. And can, right where we were, yeah. you know, so we walked out of the grandstand. All the food stalls were there. Yeah, all the drink yeah. stalls were there. All the merchandise stalls were there as well. When uh, when I went to the uh, the Silverstone Grand Prix. There was uh, it was the year that uh, that Ross Braun's team with Virgin had uh, yeah Braun's yeah uh, had had uh, done so well yeah and being uh, being British with Jensen at the time and whatever uh, the race finished on the uh, on the Sunday and Ross Braun went to go and sell Braun t shirts <laughs> behind the stand <laughs> and of course the place just ended up being completely jammed it's very special yeah I know it is uh, quite amazing and then that evening actually just took it easy i mean uh bumped into some of the mercedes benz people that were coming back uh, late at the circuit um and we knew they were going to go out and have a big party but i was actually feeling quite tired so i just you know had a bit of room service and and that kind of stuff and and chilled out the following morning then i met uh, officially the two ladies two south african girls who work in the kitchen for the mercedes team uh in the in the hotel and then we had another s-class vip back to the airport and this time with a very very cool guy who explained the whole basic history of hungary to us which was amazing you know from the communist regime yeah etc etc et and then that was it we got got uh, got to budapest got on the flight flew to munich this was the only only downside is that we arrived in munich at like two o'clock in the afternoon and our flight was at 10 so <sighs> seven and a half hours in and you airport. go out no, no, because Brandon couldn't. His, his uh, visa didn't allow him to go out. So, I mean, you sit in a business lounge, have something to eat, go to the smoking room, back to the lounge, have something to eat. But the great thing is you can have a shower just before you fly. So Eight hours, though. Yeah, I know. It's a, you, you know what? Airports can be a pain. <coughs> um, yeah, imagine how Edward Snowden feels. Exactly. Yeah. He's been He's there been for a couple that, of weeks. That, that, that slow lounge for a month. Yeah. So then, uh, and then we flew back. That's and amazing. yeah, came back. What an amazing trip. Yeah. It was. It was so special. And I tell you, the BlackBerry people from here in South Africa were so brilliant in organizing. I mean, listen, we ran the competition quickly. Mm -hmm. We found a winner that everything organized. The, the schedule that they sent me here in South Africa worked exactly the way that it worked over there. Um, Simon and Sam and, his, and their whole team that looked after us via our driver who was uh, exceptional. The BlackBerry people, the Mercedes people, everyone we met, there was... We had just so much fun. The people were so friendly in, in Budapest. Um, we don't know how much we got ripped off because their money is a bit strange. So you pay in euros, they give you something back in hoofs, and you're just going, oh, yeah. okay, well, I'm, sure. <laughs> I, I'm assuming that's right. And did, uh, I mean, I know that he had a good time, but but what was Brandon's feeling about the whole thing? He must have I think he must have been blown away. Yeah, I, th I think he's still in, in like a bit of... Uh, holiday land or oh. something so i can't wait to see his you know what he writes about and oh. um, and his pictures and that kind of stuff because he also took a whole loads of pictures and I'm, I'm sure it's quite surreal to him still you know i mean what a way to go and watch a grand prix vip your treatment, first grand prix ever. business class and you yeah. and the team that you're there with wins yeah, it's, uh, that's that's a once that's in pretty, a lifetime, yeah, really. Yeah, yeah that, that, that's not going to happen every Grand Prix. No, 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 no. I think yeah. they should take you to every race because you're the good luck charm. I am. Thanks. Blackberry, are you listening? And you can take me too. Okay. Because we'll I'll make Dizzy you win well. by even more seconds. That's it. You do that. So i got to say thank you to Blackberry for the opportunity and uh, everybody else that was involved. And well and, done to Brandon. And again. to Brandon as well. He was a really, really top class uh, guy. We had a great time together. Um, and I hope he enjoyed it as much as I did. Weekdays from 12 to 2 p.m. Central African time. Beautiful. Beautiful. Gears.